show me where is the file. My name is Eli, and I'm from the Vulcani Center. Now we are going to switch from very tiny creatures that you can hardly see to big one and very tasty. This is the sweet pepper. And sorry for those that are growing algae. A little bit about the Vulcani Center. It belongs to the Ministry of Agriculture. This is the research arm in the ministry and is responsible for about 70% of the agricultural research that is conducted in Israel. The rest is done by the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and other universities like Ben Gurion University. In Vulcani Center, there are six institutes. And one of the institutes is the Institute of Post-Harvest and Food Sciences. Right now, I'm the head of this institute. But I'm also a member in the Department of Post-Harvest Science of Fresh Produce. A little bit about this department. Surprisingly, although Israel is a very tiny country, this is the biggest department in the world. And among the three leading departments in post-harvest, it's a very unique department because, first of all, we are working for our government, and therefore we are devoted to the Israeli farmers, and we are leading in applied research. So I'm going to talk a little bit about post-harvest practices of sweet pepper in Israel. And again, I'm emphasis in Israel. What I would like to show you here is based on research as well as other things. And of course, if you later on have some question or if you would like to show other things or to ask me, we'll go ahead. Now, this is our little country. And by the way, this is really those of you that haven't visited Israel. It's a very small country. From the north to the south, this is just 500 kilometers. And basically, you can take, you can wake up in the morning and take a walk. And in the evening, you will reach the other side of the country. Fast walk, yeah. Even, you know, you can walk backward. <laughs> in any case, as you already heard, 50% of the country is desert. But this is a blooming desert, very interesting place. There are two major growing regions in Israel regarding sweet pepper. The biggest one is in the Arava Valley, down from the Dead Sea. No one killed the Dead Sea, by the way, until the Red Sea. There is another growing area. This is in the Jordan River. And here, during the winter time, because pepper is a summer crop, but because of the weather condition and plenty of sunshine, during the winter time, we grow pepper mainly in the south and in the Jordan Valley to export. And during the summertime, from local, for local market, not far away from Haifa, this is along the coastal area, and not far away from Absor, this is a semi-arid places. Now, several information about, uh, a couple of information about pepper in Israel. First of all, we have about 2,700 hectares of peppers. Just 400 farmers are growing peppers today. We export about 130,000 uh, 130, tons. This is the second largest export uh, crop after Sweet after potatoes, sorry. And the income is about a, a quarter billion dollars. The average yield of pepper in Israel is about 80 to 90 tons per hectare. We export mainly red pepper, about 50%, 15% yellow, and about 5% orange, all type of sweet peppers. And, I will, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the post-harvest practices that is done in Israel. <clears throat> now, since we grow the pepper in the desert area, the major export market is Europe. The second largest is North America. Now, in order to export to North America, or hopefully in the future to Japan or to the Far East, we have a very nice insect named the Mediterranean fruit fly. And therefore, in the desert area, this is a quarantine. You see, this is a quarantine area that people, when they travel, they are not allowed to throw garbage, especially fruits and vegetables, outside the car. And therefore, in the desert area, based on several regulations, we can grow pepper at this point for North America. And right now, we are working 
We are doing a very intensive research to develop quarantine treatment to allow us to export to Japan. But this is done in the desert area. There are two types of growing uh, constructions. The most popular one is plastic houses. So the roof is made of plastic. Now, don't forget this is a desert area. And from time to time, we have very dusty weather. And from time to time, if there is a miracle, we have some rain. And this dust becomes very dusty and very dirty. So after a very stormy and dusty weather, farmers know that they have to wash the roof in order to get a very good photosynthesis, to get a very good yield. But the walls are insect-proof nets. And this is, again, to prevent penetration of any insects, viruses, and especially the Mediterranean food fly. So this is one. This is a very popular one. Another one, this is just a basic screen houses. Very simple one, very nice to grow. However, of course, here you can hardly control the weather condition, especially if you have very dusty weather or rain. We also try now along the coastal area. And later on, if you will hear Dr. Yosefa Shachag, she is the expert. She has developed these colored shade nets. We are trying to see how shade nets will affect the pepper and so far, after three years, three years of research, we have uh, received very interesting results regarding the quality of the pepper that is grown under the color shade nets. But later on, you will have to run to the other room to hear Dr. Josefa Shaha. We are using the double door system, again, to prevent any contamination or, or any infestation. So once you want to enter the plastic house, so you have to open the first door. While the second door is closed, then you get into this chamber, and then you close the main door, and you can open the second door. And this is, again, to reduce any type of infestation. We grow about uh, 3,300 plants per hectare. OK, you can see they are very tall plants. We use, basically, the Spanish system, which means two stems on one plant. And you get, in average, between 12 to 15 fruits per plant. You plant the fruit in the summertime, starting July, August, until September. And then you start to pick up the fruit between November to the end of March. This is the big growing, this is the big export season. Once the Dutch farmers are in the market, we cannot compete with them. So they keep the fruits for another a month or two just for the local market. And then at the end of May, they pull out everything. They are not allowed to grow anything in this area for about a month. And this is because of the Mediterranean full fly. And then they will prepare the fields. And they will start to replant again, again at the end of July, beginning of August. Regarding the post-harvest practices, I'm going to mention here very simple technologies. And this is, we call it the low tech. But at the same time, I'm going to talk about the high tech. We must use low tech and high tech. When we are talking about low tech, we are talking about education. And I'm always telling my students that even with very simple technologies, just education, you can reduce post-harvest losses significantly. Now, how we can do it? Very easily. First of all, you have to wear gloves to prevent any injuries. Again, education. Secondly, you have to work with a shear or a clipper, sharp, clean clipper. Education, nothing else. Thirdly, you have to know that you can pick up the fruit roughly until 11 AM. Depends upon the weather. In the winter time, maybe a little bit later. But in the, in the, let's say, in, November, in the February, in the desert area, temperature can reach 35, even sometimes 40. So therefore, you should keep, you should pick up the fruit at the lowest possible temperature. And then you have to know at what stage of maturity to pick up the fruit if you would like to export by sea transport and not by air. Today, you can hardly use air freight. And there are many markets in Europe that will not 
allow you to export the fresh produce by using air freight, just sea freight. And although Israel is very close to Europe, it takes from the time you pick up the fruit until it will reach the consumer, it takes between 14 to 21 days. And if you're talking about North America on the Far East, you're talking about, let's say, four weeks to five weeks. And during this period, you have to maintain the quality. And by the way, there are two very important sentences regarding post-harvest. And I have some colleagues here that they've already heard me telling this several times. There are two important sentences. The most important one is the moment you pick up the fresh produce, you cannot improve the quality. You cannot improve the quality, but you can maintain the quality. The second one that is associated with the, fr with the first one, junk in, junk out, no miracles. So you always have to start with the best possible quality in order to maintain the quality. And when we are talking about 80 to 85 color, it means that during the transportation or the shipment, the fruit will turn into a full color. And this is very important because if the fruit will be picked at uh, fully ripening, then it will not last for a week or two. Also, farmers know that they must use cart in order to move the heavy crates. They don't carry it by hands. Maybe you can carry by hands maybe the first or the second carts, but then it becomes heavy and then the farmer will drop it. And therefore, they must use cart to move the, the heavy crates. Another important thing, they are not allowed to put the crates directly on the ground. And this is to prevent any soil that will damage the fruit. Now, you don't see it, but after a few days, if the fruit was bruised by the sand, it will start to lose water and decay will penetrate directly into the fruit. So this is a matter of education, nothing else. And you see by having some education, low tech, you can reduce losses significantly. And you see the crate, you can, uh, you can stack them, you can move them very easily, and that's all. Now, how you pick up the fruit? There are two types of harvesting. Today, there are new varieties that you can use even just the finger. Just the finger, very close to the abscission layer, you pick it up, you're breaking the abscission layer, and nothing will happen. But there are some cultivars that, as I've already told you, you must use the shears or the clippers, sharp and clean. And the end of each day, you have to disinfect them and clean them. Now, you can use, you have to pick up the fruit either with the calyx, and this is a market demand. And this calyx basically um, means freshness. When a consumer goes to the market, and when a consumer sees a very green and nice calyx, it means that the fruit is fresh. But if the farmer, first of all, will, will break the calyx like here or like here, this is a place for decay incidents. So you should pick up the fruit either in the abscission layer. You see, there is a very sharp cut or without any calyx, depends upon the market. Now, sometimes if the weather is too wet in the south, we tell the farmer in order to, uh, let's say, to prevent any decay causing agents, don't pick up the fruit like this, but pick it like this. And again, it's a matter of education, nothing else. But this is done based on research that we have conducted for the farmers. How to pick up the fruit and where to pick the fruit. Now, if we are talking about small and tiny fruits, like Tinkerbells, Sweetbite, Chili Pepper, it is very clear today, again, based on a very short but very intensive uh, research, you should not pick up the fruit with the calyx, just without the calyx. By picking up the fruit like this, you can reduce losses significantly. And again, no high tech, just very simple education. Now, as I told you, Israel is a very hot country, very dusty country. So if you transport the crates 
the, the loaded crates into the packing house, which is about a few kilometers from the fields. You must cover it to protect it from direct sun or from rain. And you can see how they pick the fruit. Now, this is a must. If the farmer will not follow this instruction, he will not be able to export. Very easy. Again, it's a matter of education. You always have to keep the fruits under shed, again, to prevent, to prevent any direct sun, any high temperature, or if you have enough room in your packing house in a cold area, in a cooled or child, a chilled area, using a very, very nice desert cooler. Some farmers today are having air condition in their packing houses, but most of the farmers are using this very simple uh, desert area. It's based on a car, on a car uh, radiator. The same system. So on one hand, you have this wet mattress, as we say. Water is running here. Recycled water are running here. And on the other side, you have the fan. And it blow, it pulls hot air from outside into the packing house, a very cold air. So the, the temperature is reduced between by 10 to 15 degrees. And then inside, you can keep the fruit until further processing. And of course, this is the packing house. Packing house has some standards today. I believe that you can read it. Basically, you have to write down all type of languages that you have the workers. So you have it in Hebrew, in English, in Arabic, in Thai. There are very simple things that you have to follow. But the most important one is sanitation, which is a very magic word, sanitation. Sanitation starts from the field until it will reach the market. You need a toilet inside. The, the workers, they must wear uniforms and caps. And of course, there are simple things that they must be in the packing house in order to meet the safety standards. Then you have the packing house itself. If you would like to maintain the quality, and if you would like to reach very sophisticated market, in this case, you need the high tech. And this is the high tech, and I'm going to describe it. This is a sorting machine, very expensive. And therefore, several farmers are sharing one packing house. Or there is a big central packing house, because the machineries are in the packing house are relatively very expensive. And this is already the high tech. But again, you have to start with a clean, well-illuminated and cooled area. Since we are talking about desert, the fruit is very dusty. The fruit is covered with chemicals as well. So in Israel, the fruit has to go through a, a cleaning processes. And this is done by hot water rinsing and brushing technology at 55 centigrade for about 12 to 15 seconds. And this is the machine, and you can see the fruit that is washed in hot water. Basically, we get two things. There are two components in this machine. The first one that you cannot see here, this is a tap water wash. Here, basically, we clean the fruit. We remove the dust, we remove the chemicals, and we clean the fruit, and we do not recycle the water. Then the fruit continues directly into the hot water chamber, and here the fruit is disinfected. We just use hot water, nothing else. And then the fruit must dry out. Once you wet the fruit, the, wood, the fruit must dry out by using a blower. Very simple technology. And then the fruit goes into the high-tech part, into the sorting machine that is based on a camera. And the camera, of course, you can sort the fruit according to weight, length, ratio between the diameter and the length, or according to the color. Depends upon the market. OK? Then the fruit continues into the weigher, into the chambers. And then each fruit, depends on the sorting program, will sorting the machine, or sorting the paper. Now, at the same packing house, they remove the second class fruit that goes into the local market. 
using a different carton, a different packing material. So this, is, this will go to the export, and this will go to the packing material. And by the way, those of you, they don't know how to read Hebrew. We read Hebrew, and we write from right to left. So we think from right to left. And then each farmer has this quality chart or quality guidelines. We always talk for export about class one. And the, the farmers, they know what does it mean a class one. Now, if, if the farmer sees something like this, it will be uh, sorted as a second class. But only class one will be designated for export market. Once you clean the fruit, you sow them, then you have to pack them. In most cases, we are using bulk packaging. You can see bulk packaging, two layers. The, the bottom layer is always facing the side, the fruit side. The farmer does not allow to put the fruit on the bluesom end when we're talking about the second, the bottom layer, because then the fruit will suffer from pressure damage. And then the second, the upper layer, they can put as they want. So this is about the most peppers in Israel are packed as bulk, between five kilos to eight kilos, depends upon the market, because each market would like to see a different color. Now, for example, just to tell you how life is very complicated, the Tesco, if you, if you are familiar with Tesco, it's a big English uh, company, Tesco would like to see very uniform fruit, very uniform fruit, and they would like to see 30 fruits in a, in a package, 22, depends upon the size. If the farmer will send in a 30 fruit box, 29 box, they will take the carton and we throw it away. That's the reason why you need the high tech regarding the sorting machine. The competition is very tough. And if they will ask you something, you have to obey them, unfortunately. We can al also use plastic materials. We call it a family pack, a family bag of six fruits. Now in this case, peppers do not like modified atmosphere packaging. Once the carbon dioxide is above 3%, the fruit will suffer from, from carbon dioxide damages. And therefore, all the bags have perforation. And the main reason, basically, to use the bags is to reduce water loss. That's the only reason. But also, it's a very nice gimmick. So you have, you can send, you see, two oranges, two red, and two yellow. Or you can use, we call it the traffic light packages, sleeves of red, yellow, and green. The problem starts with the green, because every pepper starts from green. Once the fruit start to ripening, to ripen, then the fruit will, will change from green to yellow, orange, uh, purple, red, and so on. Depends upon the, the breeding program. But if you send a green one, even after prolonged storage, the green should remain green, because the consumer would like to buy a green fruit. And therefore, today, there is a very intensive uh, breeding program to develop or to, to get a green fruit that will remain green and yet sweet. Now, to get such a packaging, or such a package, yes, you need, again, the high tech. And this is a special machine. Depends upon the package. You can put here one color, second color, and third color. You can mix, again, depends upon the, the market. So you put them, we call it a combinatory packer, and then the fruit runs here, and then it goes directly into a sleeve or a bag, and then you pack it. Alternatively, you have, this is just a sleeve, a perforated sleeve, and you can see there are some big perforation here, and we call it a flow pack packager. Again, this is also high tech, and here you can do a tree color, a, a traffic light color, depends upon the market, you can see you can have something like this, three fruits in a package, and then you go to the market, you pick three fruits, and then you prepare the salad 
or whatever you want. And you have here the packager, the, the, the flow pack. You put three fruits, and then the machine will pack them automatically. Yes, this is the high tech. You can use this, this kind of fruit. This is the Tinkerbell. These are very tiny fruit, this size, not more. Or you have the sweet bite, also very small fruit, very tasty, very sweet. They contain about between 10 to 14% of sugar. You don't, when you drink coffee, you can put the pepper. You don't have to add the sugar. It's so sweet. Yeah, of course. You can eat it and then you have a, an energy to continue to work. <laughs> and we also export chili. But again, if you will pay attention, no calyx. No calyx. Also, no calyx. So when we're talking about the small fruits, because the calyx is very tiny and very thin, it tends to dry out very easily. And therefore, we recommend the farmer using or exporting or growing such a fruit, just no calyx. Regarding the chili pepper, in order to get another two weeks at storage, we pack them. Now, you cannot see it, but you can see here the sleeves. You can see the bag, a plastic bag, a perforated plastic bag, and you can get about between four to five weeks storage with very easily. But don't forget to remove the calyx. So here you have the combination of low-tech and high-tech. Or we're using this elongated fruit. We call it Ramiro. Again, very sweet. All the sweet, all, all, all these peppers are mostly sweet. Then this, the next step is to label the carton in order to have a very good trackability. You have to label everything on the carton so you have the name of the farmer, the date of harvest, you have to mark what kind of fruit. So this is orange, the size of the fruit. Everything should be labeled. And then you have to palletize. You see, this is for export, and this is for local market. The next step, of course, is to palletize and label the whole pallet. And there are also a regulation regarding palletizing the fruit, or the whole pallet. Basically, don't forget that when we palletize something, we have to secure the boxes. We have to secure the, the, the shipment. There are many movements. People are trying, or there are many touch regarding the pallets. And you have to secure them. So you have to put the brackets here. You have to put two cups. We call it cups, one and two. This is usually about between 10 to 11 layers. And yeah, you have to put the poly propylene bands to secure it. And then you have to label the pallet. Once you label the, car, the pallet and you have all the information on this label, once you label it, the people in Europe already know what do you have in your packing house. So they can make order within a very short time. But again, you have to write, you have to write the place of the packing house, what exactly you have, how many cartons, the color, the size, and so on. Again, everything is labeled. And once the farmer or the central packing house labeled the carton, again, the information is sent directly by the internet to the, cons to the consumers. In Israel, usually because we are talking about winter crop, but in the desert time, it's very, in the desert area, it's still very hot. We are using, using pre-cooling system for up to 24 hours at 7 centigrade. But the most important thing is between 94 to 95% of relative humidity. And this, this is done by adding a relative humidity into the central cooling facilities. Now, such, an ins such a facility, is, again, is very, very, very expensive. Very few farmers can own their own, they can own a small cooling facility. But the majority are using one central cooling facility. So in, in every village in the desert area, there is a one cooling facility that the farmers bring their loads there. 
the fruit is cooled down for at least for about 24 hours, and the fruit goes through the first quality assurance analysis. And this is done by people from the Ministry of Agriculture, and this is done by the people from the Plant Protection and Inspection Services. And they check the quality, the first quality. And this is to uh, assure that the quality that will reach the market in Europe will be the best one. So again, this is a humidifier. This is a very nice system. The drop is very small. So you can increase the relative humidity up to 98% without wetting the cartons or the commodities. So this is the central cooling facility. Once the fruit was cooled down for about 12 to 24 hours, then it will be loaded on a refrigerated truck that the temperature here is the same temperature as in the cooling facilities. Since we're talking about pepper, so the central cooling facility is at 7 centigrade, and therefore the refrigerated truck should be at 7 centigrade. And they load it immediately. And in this case, the driver knows that he has to turn on the air condition or the cooling unit at least 15 minutes before he will start to load it. So the container or the bay will be already cooled. We also use containers. So the first thing, once before you load the container, you have to disinfect it. Again, sanitation. And this is the, the guideline. You have to clean everything. You have to set the temperature to 7 centigrade. And you also have to set the ventilation hole, the window, for air exchange. Now, since pepper is not a climacteric fruit, usually you use about 50 to 70% of ventilation, or 50 to 25% of ventilation, not more, not more. But you have to set it according to the crop. Now, if this will be wrong, then definitely you will affect the quality after several weeks. So this is very important. The fruit is sent from the south to Israel. Again, within four, four or five hours of drive, they reach the sea terminal. The people check based on the information that was already appeared on the label here. This guy check whether all the commodities is in the truck. It goes through a second quality assurance by the people of the PPIS, and they, they take randomly two cartons from each pallet, and they check the quality mainly. They check the weight, bruises, color, and so on. They don't check chemicals. This is done separately. Every shipment is checked separately for residues. It is done in Israel, and it is done in Europe or in the uh, final destination. So they check the basic quality parameters. If they find everything, if they find that the quality is OK, this pallet will be approved for shipment. If there will be some problems, they will check another two cartons. If those cartons are still bad, the whole shipment will be sent back to the farmer. And he will get a penalty. And if this will be repeated, then probably his packing house will be closed for at least a week. So people are very tough. No games here. But in any case, they check it. They keep the commodity for between two to five days, again, at 7 centigrade, and a relative humidity between 30 and 93 to 95 percent. And they keep it until a boat or a ship will be ready. There is once a week, there is a, a ship on Thursdays that leave the port of Ashdod to the port of Porto Vado in Italy. It takes about three and a half days. But don't forget, there is once a week. And the farmers pick the fruit almost every day. So roughly, they, they keep it. And again, at the central cooling facilities, up to five days, once the ship is ready, they will load it on a refrigerated truck within uh, five minutes. And then they will bring it into the ship in port of the Ashdod. It takes about, to, to load about 20, 22 pallets, it takes about 10 minutes, that's all. 
and they will load it into an already cooled chamber. Hmm. Now, as I told you, we are here, and we would like to see whether we can export to Japan. Now, Japan, this is a quarantine country, and we have the Mediterranean full flight. And therefore, we are right now, uh, with the help of the Ministry of Agriculture and the farmers, yes, farmers in Israel are supporting research, applied research. We would like to see if we would be able to reach J Japan. Hopefully, within two years, we'll have a solution. Hopefully. I'm not absolutely sure, but hopefully. But at this point, we also export to United States or to the North America. Now, from here to Europe, as I told you, it takes about 10 to 14, 18 days. From here to United States or North America, it takes about three to four weeks. Again, from Israel to the Far East, it takes about three to four weeks. Now, during this period, as I told you, you have to maintain the quality. And of course, as I told you, this is the biggest market in Europe. Now, the fruit are sold in open markets at a very low cost, but mainly in supermarkets at a very high cost. Depends upon the season or even depends upon the day. Now, you can see how they are arranged. Of course, the quality should be very well. Or you have, this is the mobile uh, markets also. You can uh, keep it. Now, don't forget that the moment you pick up the fruit or the moment you buy the fruit as a consumer, you have to keep it for another week at home. And therefore, when we are talking about three weeks of storage, this three weeks includes home. And now I'm going to show you a short movie about the packing house. Hopefully it will run and I will give you an explanation. So the fruit is very dirty. You can bring it in a carton, in a corrugated carton. And of course you have to remove this. Or they are brought in a corrugate or in plastic crates. And this is the hot water machine. So this is the tap water wash. And the fruit continues into the hot water wash with a temperature of about 55 to 56 centigrade. This is the hot water wash. The fruit is exposed to about 20, uh, for 12 to about 15 seconds, that's all. And the fruit continues into the drying. So we are using here forced earth knives to remove the water. And then some ventilation to improve the dryness. Hmm. What happened? This is, this is the high tech. I'll see, maybe I can run it. Finito la comedia. <laughs> okay, we have to, we have to run the computer again. So again, this is the hot water machine. And the temperature, as I told you. And this is the hot water unit. Now, in this case, we recycle the water. As you have already heard, water is a big problem in Israel. So the hot water is recycled. And because of the temperature, basically, we disinfect the water. 
and then the fruit must be dry out. The whole process from the moment we put the fruit in the hot water until it will reach the, the, the carton takes about two and a half minutes, that's all. And you see, so the dryer is here. It goes now to the sorting line. So this is the camera. It is packed automatically, depends upon the packing house. Once there is five kilos, it will be open automatically. And of course, the people will start to palletize it. And they build the carton. And I think I'm already done. I just have to show you my last slide, which is very important. Questions? So thank you very much for your attention.